Good morning children, good morning everyone at home and welcome to another children's online service. I hope you're all well, all had a good week and making the most of the sun. It's been so warm the past couple of days. I know too hot at times but nevertheless I hope you've all enjoyed it. Been out there, been to the park and just had a good week. So now we will go into our time of worship. Stand up, get involved as we praise and worship our God. Whatever one needs compassion, a love that's never failing, let mercy fall on me. who took part in that time of praise and worship, sang the song, gave your role, and just really showed your praise and your love to God. So now we'll get into our time of prayer to start off the service. Please join me. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to fellowship once more with you, to know more about you, to learn something new and for you to speak to our hearts. Father, we believe that you will indeed speak to our hearts this service and that we will grow stronger and grow to know you a bit more. We pray that we will be listening and our attention will be focused only on you, Lord. We thank you that you've heard us. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. So now it's time to recap last week's lesson. Last week, we looked at the armor of God found in Ephesians 6 from verses 10 to 18. We looked at the full armor, the whole armor that God gives us to protect us through life and to protect us from some of the devil's evil tricks. We looked at the whole armor and the first piece that we looked at was the belt of truth. The belt of truth is believing in God's word and believing in 
everything that God has said and rejecting the things that, that the enemy says to us. And we must hold on to God's truth. The next piece of armour is the breastplate of righteousness. Our righteousness comes through, through God, through Jesus, through him dying for us. He makes us new, he makes us brand new and pure. We can never be righteous through our own doing or through anything like that. It's through him and we must hold on to that and believe that he has made us brand new and he has strengthened us to be righteous and new. The next piece of armour is our feet fitted with the gospel of peace. Like a Roman soldier, we must be prepared to go. We must be prepared to share the gospel. Share the gospel with everyone we meet, anyone we meet. Tell them the good news about Jesus Christ. Tell them the peace that they can receive. The next part of armour we have is the shield of faith. We have the shield of faith. And remember, the shield of faith is complete trust and obedience in God. We must always remember to put our complete trust and obedience in God to be able to deflect some of the seeds of doubt that we may have in our minds. We must hold on to God's truth and remember that our trust and faith must be put in Him. And next we have our helmet of salvation. Our helmet of salvation is believing that we have been saved. That is our security that we have, that we have been saved by Jesus Christ and nothing, absolutely nothing can take that away. We must hold on to that and we have our salvation through Jesus Christ. And next, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The word of God is found within the Bible. That is knowing what it actually says. We must take time to go through the Bible with your parents um, on your own, but just know what God's word says about you. That is our only weapon that we have to be able to stand firm, stand strong uh, during the course of life and to be able to be victorious. Remember to always put on the whole armour of God. That is the protection that we have. We are on the winning side. God has already overcome everything. Remember to always put your trust into him and to always have your armour on. So now we'll look back at last week's memory verse and it was taken from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 and it reads, Wear the full armour of God, wear God's armour so that you can fight against the devil's evil tricks. I hope you took time to go over that memory verse and it was able to bless you and encourage you to always wear your full armour of God. So last week we set the armour of God fill in the blanks activity. I hope you were able to have a look at what the armour looks like. You were able to visualise the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, every single part. Apologies in the delay in getting that up there. It is up there and you'll also be able to find this week's coming homework on there too. Big, big well done to everyone who's completed that and if you're going to complete that, big well done to you too. So now let's all say hello to Emma. Good morning everyone, how are you? I trust that you've had an absolutely amazing week and you're all keeping well. This week we're going to be learning about the story of David and Goliath, so enjoy the lesson. God's story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath and it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, 
While David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right. He even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, You come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword, and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. David was a shepherd. He brought his brother's lunch. He saw Goliath. Goliath scared everybody. David wasn't scared. He knew God was stronger. David fought Goliath. He used one stone. God helped him kill Goliath. The Israelites won. God's people were saved. And that's a part of God's story. So I hope you are blessed by the story of David and Goliath. The lesson we can take out of this story is one of courage, faith and overcoming what seems to be impossible. David was able to fight Goliath because he knew that he had God on his side and that's to say that with God on our side we can overcome any situation, anything that looks bigger then we can even imagine we know that because God is on the inside of us and fighting in our corner that we can overcome. David also knew that if God was for him, who can be against him? So just remember that, that is, if God is for you, that no one can be against you. He knew that time and time again, God has come through for him. And I would like you to also remember that. So the memory verse for this week is taken from 1st John 4 verse 4 which reads 
You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Amen. So this week's activity is Spot the Difference. Good luck. So for this week's activity, you have a David and Goliath worksheet which can be located at www.thekingshouse.co.uk slash downloads. We have come to the end of the lesson. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you that we have learned that with you on the inside of us, we can do everything and we can conquer all. Thank you because you are continuously fighting on our behalf and we thank you because we know that when we have you on our side that nothing is too big or nothing is too difficult that you can't help us solve. So we thank you for always being with us and we love you, we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we commit next week into your hands. I pray that you'll go before us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord now and forever. Amen. Let's share our confession. I trust God for a remarkable year of fruitfulness. I will endeavour to hear God's voice clearly, obey his instructions carefully and serve his agenda willingly every day. As a result, everything God promised will come to me speedily this year. In Jesus' name, Amen. That's the end of the service. Have a blessed week and see you next Sunday.